Now, uh, I guess what we could do is we could say um, dot, 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 depending on the question, because we've got three terms here, we've established a pattern, I could go to a, a general term, a, n, and just have like however many there are. But in fact, you and me, we're trying to get to something specific. We're trying to get to uh, this one here. Yes? So let's just, let's just go to A6. This question doesn't require us to get a general term. So A6 will equal, okay? Now, what should be there? We're trying to use this, follow the pattern. I'll give you a clue. It starts with a dollar. <laughs> what comes next? Um, and then put the brackets, and then put that to the power of five. Nice. Okay, so just in case we're you know, not following along here, right? There's the initial dollar, the very first dollar we put in there. It's got this amount of interest on it. How many lots of interest? And the answer is, in this setup, because it's at the end of the year that we put the installment, it's always one less than the number of years you've been in there. One less than the number of years you've been in there. You following how I'm getting that from the pattern? So that's why this is one less than the six. And then we get the same terms, just it goes down. One uh, index at a time. So here comes this guy here. That's the second installment. It was in there for the second longest amount of time. Three terms establishes my pattern. So dot, dot, dot. What will be the last term? Always a dollar, right? Because that's always happening at the end of the year. Well done. Now at this point, I mean, it's a sufficiently short series that if you wanted, you could just go to your calculator and just chuck it all in, okay? But we don't need to do that. We can take this whole thing and we can pop it into a formula that will do all of that number crunching for us, right? This, in fact, is a GP, right? This is what we were searching for. I need the three characteristics um, to put this into the formula. What are the three things I'm searching for? Tell me what the terms are and then we'll get what the values are. So firstly, I need a, an A, which is um, my first term, right? I need the next thing, which is R, which is a common ratio between it. And lastly, a number of terms, right? How, how long is this uh, series, okay? So now let's have a go at each one. First term, what would you like to call the first term? Now, instinctively, you'd say, oh, well, the first term is the first one here, but well, like, actually it's easier, we've seen this before, if we reverse the order, consider it from here, and then it gets bigger as you go to the left. So I'm gonna call that guy A, yeah? That enables me to say, from going from this end that way, my terms get bigger and bigger and bigger, because my ratio is 1.04, right? Okay, fantastic. And then lastly, how many terms are there in this thing? There's the six, right? Uh, five, four, three, two, one, and then zero. So therefore, six in total. And I can take all those three pieces, A, R, and N, pop them into my sum of a GP formula. So A, six, equals. Can we do it from memory? Do you need the reference sheet? What do you think? Okay, good. We start with A, which in this case is a dollar, right? And then up in the brackets here, this, this is a fraction. Do you remember? What's in here? It's... To the power of n. Ah, so there's, there's two different forms, right? There's two different forms. There's an r minus 1 form, and then there's a 1 minus r form. Which one is this one, and then there's this one? Which one, sorry, that's really messy. Which one's easier to use in this case? Yeah, it's going to be this one, yeah? Why is that? Yeah, I'm trying to avoid negatives. My r is bigger than 1, so I'll use this one, okay? So therefore, I've got r, there it is, to the power of uh, n, which in this case is 6. Sorry, I didn't leave myself enough space. There's out of the N. Take away one. And then what's on the bottom? Let's just go, right? Yeah. Um, 0 0.04 is what you'll get, but let's just write in the step. Question. Do you have a question? Yeah, no? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Or you were going to say, yeah. Do we need to take that dollar sign in there at all times? This guy here? Okay. Do we need to get the dollar sign in there at all times? Short answer is no. Um, you'll, you'll at the end of this say, this is. This is currency, this is money. So you're going to conclude and say this is some number of dollars. I'm putting in there for one simple reason, which is when you come back to this, this working, in some number of weeks or months time, right? And there's a danger that if, for example, I wrote it like this, right? I've just taken off all the dollar signs, okay? This will still give me the correct number, okay? However, at least this is the way my brain works, I just forget the meaning of stuff after I've written it down in working, like, like, 10 minutes pass, I'm like, who wrote this? Who did this, right? I'm putting a dollar here to remind myself, where did that come from? And the answer is it came from the installments, right? It's not just a number, it actually signifies um, the annuity that's going in. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's totally fine if you don't include the dollar sign, but 
I mean, it saves me the fact that I'm going to have dollars at the end anyway, so I've got it all the way through as well. Has anyone, while I've been installing, gone to their calculator and evaluated this? No. And I'd love to get a few decimal places on this one, please. Pam, what do you got for me? Uh, 6.6329754632. Really? Did everyone get the same thing? Yes. 6.6. Oh, that's right. 975. Is that all you got? 462. Thank you. Dot, 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 dot. Sorry, I, know, I was misremembering a different decimal point. Okay, let's have a look at this guy, right? Does this line up with what we were expecting? Yes, sir. This whole table is to four decimal places. So when I round off, this guy's fine, this guy's fine, this guy, right, gets interacted with, with this guy, right? Because you're like, that nine gets rounded up from the seven after it. So it gets rounded up to 10, carry the one, and that's why you get 6.63. Three zero um, to four decimal places, as we were hoping. Make sense? Can we not just round it to sixty-three cents? Sixty-three cents? But then you round it. Oh, you're talking about like to lots of five. Yeah. That's a really good question, and I'm going to tell you why we don't. Actually, no. Uh, okay. uh, you, do you see where this is going? Okay. So the question was. Well, I don't know. This is a number of dollars, right? In fact, I silly left off the dollar sign. Um, this is a number of dollars. Why do we not do the same thing we do with all other currencies and just round off to two decimal places? What's up with the four? Okay. Well, it's a, I couldn't have asked for a better segue to this question here. How do we use these tables? Okay. So this is for an annuity of a grand total of a dollar. Okay. Clearly, annuities are usually more than that. Okay. So as an example, suppose I said four percent per annum. Uh, six years, but who puts in a dollar every single year? We're going to have much larger sums. Let's say, for example, it was $7,000. Okay, that's actually quite reasonable for someone putting into their superannuation fund. Well, how do I use all the stuff that I just worked out? The whole point of a table is that we do not need to prove this every single time. Okay? If I've got $7,000, then each individual dollar is going to turn into $6.6330 dollars. Uh. So if you've got 7,000 of them from the table, right? I would say uh, total, well actually I don't need to say total, I can say future value, that is what we're determining, right? Future value equals 7,000 of those. Does that make sense? Because each individual dollar is earning its interest and all that kind of thing. So now hopefully you're seeing why 6330, why we do not round that to 6.65. Can someone tell me? It would, have quite a lot of it would make a big difference, wouldn't it? Right? These four decimal places are there to cover the fact that we're very likely going to multiply this by large numbers. So if we introduce some error here by approximation, I mean we're always introducing some error, but if it's a big error, it's going to become massive by the time we finish. What is this equal, by the way? 46,431. I'll, I'll, I'll take that, nearest $1. Okay. Uh, oh, was it actually? Okay, there you go. Actually, it shouldn't surprise us that that's exactly right because you've got four decimal places here. The fourth one ends up being zero, so it's almost as though it's not a significant figure. And then you're multiplying by something with three decimal places, so that's why it all sort of comes out in the wash. Okay? So, future value tables. Um, there you go. That's where they come from. How you use them, if they get handed to you, is just by taking whatever the total installment is and multiplying by the appropriate row and column. Okay? Let me just put two final notes before I let you go further into this document and just have a got some exercises. Number one, this is a future value table. What's the opposite of a future value? Present value. Present value. So there are also present value tables. Okay, so we'll show you them later. The second thing to be cautious of is this guy. And I put it in red so that we would highlight it right at the end. Installments happen when? End of year. End of year for this question, for this table. If I did installments at the start of the year, this would be all different, yeah. wouldn't it? I'll just give you a quick example. Have a look right at the top left-hand corner. Just have a look at it for the sake of um, illustration. A dollar, one percent. What happens to that one dollar at the end of one year? What does it say? It's down to your no, hold on, hold on. Just the first row. One dollar, one year. Oh. Really? Look at it again. Nothing's changed. Why is that? And the answer is 
Because it happened at the end of the year. It didn't have any time to earn interest. If I change this to the start of the year, this table's all wrong. Or should I say, this is not the table for that. It should be 1.01. Now, it's not just a change. Have a look closely. Where is 1.01 on this table? And the answer is, it's not there. Look again, right? Because it's set up for a whole different method, or, or timing, I should say, of investment. Okay? So you must be careful. You must be cautious. Read this closely and then interpret the table accordingly. Okay? Language. Yeah, language. So, so, so. An exponentially larger amount if you put 7,000 in. That's an interesting question for you to answer. So for those of you who didn't get it right at the start, um, if you go to Canvas, head to Financial Mathematics 2, this document that we were mostly looking at is the future values table. Okay, have a go, download it, and um, there's an exercise on the second page. I got I it. I know how to do it. Oh, sure. I am. Oh, my God. You may. No. Oh my goodness. It's Sorry. okay. You're fine. Hey. Oh, did we get it? 